Okay. So, I am now going to discuss the solutions to multiple choice problems, numbers 1 up to 24. So, the rest of the multiple choice problems will be your assignment for Thursday. Now, in uh, problem number 1, Manette Corporation exchanges 150,000 shares of newly issued 1 peso par value common stock with a fair market value of 25 per share for all of the outstanding 5 peso par value common stock of Gardner Incorporated and Gardner is then dissolved. Manette paid the following cost and expenses related to the business combination. Uh, we have now the cost of special shareholders meeting to vote on the merger, registering and issuing securities, accounting and legal fees, salaries of Manette's employees assigned to the implementation of the merger, cost of closing duplicate facilities. In the business combination of Manette and Garner, now we have uh, letter C. The cost of registering and issuing uh, the securities. So we have now the cost of uh, registering and issuing the securities of 14000 are deducted from the fair value of the common stock used to acquire Garner. So acquisition related costs are costs the acquirer incurs to effect a business combination. Those costs include finder's fee, advisory, legal, accounting, valuation, and other professional or consulting fees. General administrative costs including the cost of maintaining an internal acquisitions department and cost of registering and issuing debt and equity securities. Under PFRS 3, the acquirer is required to recognize acquisition-related costs or as expenses in the period in which the costs are incurred and the services are received with one exception such as the cost to issue equity securities are recognized as debit to a pick per share or per share premium account. So the answer to number one is letter C. Now we go to problems items uh, two to six are based on the following information so we have now uh, problem uh, two up to number six uh, we have uh, DJ pays five million in cash and issues 50,000 shares of stock with a par value of 10 peso per share and fair value of 40 per share to acquire builders assets and liabilities on January 1 20x4 balance sheets just prior to the acquisition are as follows so we have now dj and uh, builders uh, being the acquiring and the acquired companies so we have now current assets now take note we have the given book values and fair values for builders so we have property plants and equipment identifiable intangible assets with total assets current liabilities long-term debt a common stock with par value then additional paid in capital retained earnings accumulated other comprehensive income and uh, we have treasury stock deduction finally the total liabilities and equity DJ's consultants find these items that are not reported on builder's balance sheet. So we have now the uh, uh, meaning these items that are found by the consultants 
of DJ were not recorded by uh, builders. Potential contracts with new customers, advanced production technology, future cost savings, contractual obligations, two long-term warranties, non-competition agreements, customer relationships, not contractual, customer contract, recent favorable press reports on a consulting firm, long-time customer relationships. Outside consultants are paid 400000 in cash and registration fees to issue the new stock are 200000 To sweeten the deal, DJ agrees to pay the former shareholders to builders an additional cash amount of four million uh, at the end of twenty X five. That depends on the twenty X four X five reported net income of builders. DJ believes there is a twenty five percent chance that this payment will have to be made and the appropriate discount rate for the earn out is twenty percent. Present value factor of 120% is 0.6944. So in uh, here, in requirement uh, number 2, calculate the amount of consideration uh, transferred. So the amount of the consideration uh, transferred is uh, now... Seven million six hundred ninety four four hundred forty. That's letter D. The consideration transferred. We have the cash uh, to former shareholders or stockholders. Uh, given is uh, the amount of uh, five million. So that's uh, DJ pays five million in cash. So five million and then. Market value of stock to former shareholders in the amount of 50,000 times 40 to 2 million and the earn out uh, present value of cash contingent consideration uh, depending upon the uh, earning capacity of the company in the coming two years. So 4 million times uh, 0.25 there is a 25% chance that this payment will have to be made and you multiply by the present value factor. So we have now 694, 440. The consideration transferred is 7,694,440 and it's letter B. Then uh, for uh, requirement uh, number three, calculate the goodwill that should be reported on this uh, acquisition. So we have the goodwill in the amount of uh, 2,384,440 computed above. So we have the consideration transferred of 7,694,440. And then we have the market values of uh, the current assets of uh, 2.1 uh, million. That's the current assets of builders, property, plant, and equipment of 3 million, 7 million for the identifiable intangible assets. So, previously unreported intangibles, advanced production technology for 170,000 and then the non-competition agreements for 70,000 and we have the customer contract for uh, 50,000 uh, and we deduct the current liabilities of uh, 1 million and 5.8 million now take note that we have not uh, included uh, some of this uh, but we only included uh, 170,000 but not the potential contracts then the future cost savings 
you have not included contractual obligations, you have not included, but you only included 70,000. Uh, you have not included customer relationships. It's not uh, contractual. And we included 50,000, the customer contract. We have not included the recent favorable press reports on a consulting firm and the long-time customer relationships. So we now get the uh, previously unreported warranty uh, contractual uh, obligations for contractual obligations long-term uh, warranties we are deducting 280,000 uh, that's the long-term contractual obligations so we have now the difference of 5 million 310,000 deducted from the consideration transferred so the difference is a positive excess that's uh, considered to be goodwill of 2,384,440 and uh, requirement number 3 the answer is letter B next we go to uh, number 4 uh, actually we have number 4 5 and uh, 6 for the remaining uh, requirements the total asset after the acquisition. So we have now the assets of uh, DJ in the amount of uh, uh, 62,400. That's the total uh, assets of DJ. By the way, in number four, we are asked for the total assets after the acquisition. So 60. 2,400,000 for the total assets. Then we are adding uh, 2,100,000 and 3,000,000 and uh, 7,000,000. We have now the uh, assets of the acquired company. So 2,100,000, 3,000,000 and 7,000,000. Then we are adding the advanced production Technology of 170,000 plus 70,000 uh, plus uh, 50,000 plus 2,384,000 uh, that's the positive goodwill computed above in the direct cost deduct. 400,000 and uh, 200,000 cost to issue and then 5 million the cash uh, consideration paid to uh, the uh, stockholders so we have deduct 5 million cash consideration then the unreported intangibles of uh, 170 thousand seventy thousand fifty thousand or we have the total of two hundred ninety thousand cash paid to the unreported intangibles so we now have the uh, uh, assets of seventy one million five hundred seventy four uh, total assets so we have now letter C in number five, uh, what is the total liabilities after the acquisition? So the total liabilities of DJ current is 6.5 million, long term 30 million, and uh, we have uh, 1 million for from builders and 5.8 million from builders. Then we have the contractual. Uh, obligations of uh, 280,000 as uh, reported above and uh, we have now 694,000 the present value of uh, the cash 
uh, consideration. So here, 694-440 being a contingent consideration. So we have now the uh, total liabilities of 44 million uh, 274 440 in number 5 is letter B. Number 6, the stockholder, shareholder, equity, holder, sub DJ after the acquisition. So in number 6, stockholder, equity, oh, we have now the common stock of uh, <coughs> DJ of 200,000 uh, plus 50. Thousand shares at uh, ten uh, issued, so that means a total of seven hundred thousand. So for the API, twenty two million from DJ plus fifty thousand shares times uh, thirty. The market value is forty. The parts only ten, so we have thirty times fifty thousand. That's one point five. And we deduct the cost to issue of 200,000. So we have 23,300,000. Then retained earnings of DJ, the given balance of 4 a million. Then we deduct 400,000 for the direct cost, normally debited to expenses. And when the books already closed, we use retained earnings. Then uh, we have now the uh, uh, other comprehensive uh, income given at accumulated amount of 100,000 and treasury stock of 400,000. So we now have 27 million uh, 300,000 in number 6 letter D. Therefore, as set number 4, liabilities number 5, and we have stockholders equity number 6. Total liabilities and stockholders equity equals the total assets. So in number 6, it's uh, still letter B. Okay, now we go to next number 7. 7 up to number 13. Okay, 7 up to number 13. Uh, based on the following information, Dr. Pepper Snapple Group, uh, Dr. Pepper Snapper Group acquired the assets and liabilities of Turquoise Water Incorporated on September 30, 2005 in a statutory merger. The acquisition involves the following payments. Cash paid to Turquoise Water, 85 million. Paid to Morgan Stanley for consulting uh, services. New stock issued, 100,000 shares at 50 par. The fair value at acquisition. Uh, that's the fair value. But the parts only 0.50. Stock registration fees paid in cash 600,000 earnings. Contingency to be paid in three years. The present value of 2 million. Turquoise Waters balance sheet just prior to the acquisition appears below. Fair value information on Turquoise Waters assets and liabilities also provided so we have now dpsd at book values turquoise water at book values and at fair values in addition to the assets reported on turquoise waters balance sheet the following previously unreported intangible assets are identified butler's franchise rights Signed customer contracts, consulting projects, technically skilled workforce, internet domain names, expected expansion into new product lines, customer order backlogs, 
employment contracts, registered company name, business from prospective customers, potential contracts with prospective customers, well-publicized internet domain name, trade dress, and proprietary databases of uh, industry data and trade secrets. So, question number seven, calculate the amount of consideration uh, transferred. So, the consideration transferred now is uh, cash paid, 85 million, new stock issued, 100,000 shares at 50 pa par, but the fair value is 5 million, earnings contingency to be paid in 3 years, given for uh, 2 million, now it's still to be paid in uh, three years and we have now the consideration transferred uh, for the total acquisition cost of 92 million so it's letter A letter B calculate the goodwill that should be reported on the acquisition so we have the market value of assets and liabilities for current assets we have 800 thousand for the plant and equipment of 10 million uh, 20 million for patents and uh, trademarks then we add butter butlers franchise rights 5 million uh, signed customer contracts of 1 million a uh, 15 million for a technically skilled workforce uh, so we have now the uh, amount of uh, here 5 million, 1 million, 3 million. Uh, we have uh, 1.5 million customer order backlogs. Okay, so customer order backlogs for 1.5 million. Employment contracts for 500,000. Registered the uh, company name for 1 million, 2 million for well publicized uh, internet uh, connection name of 2 million, trade dress of 1.2 million, and then we have proprietary databases, industry data of 800,000 and trade secret of 400,000. Then likewise, we deduct the current liabilities of 400,000 and 41 million. So in other words, the, uh, the previously and the 14 tangible assets which are now identified uh, which are now identified and uh, we have to consider uh, includes your uh, 5 million butlers uh, franchise rights signed customer contracts to consulting uh, projects of 1 million then internet uh, domain names uh, internet domain names for uh, 3 million but we have not included a technically skilled workforce then uh, we have uh, 1.5 million customer order backlogs uh, customer order backlogs of uh, 1.5 million but we have not included expected expansion into new product lines then uh, we have employment contracts for 500,000 registered company name for uh, 1 million, then well publicized internet domain name for 2 million, and trade dress for 1.2 million proprietary databases, industry data of uh, 800,000 
and uh, we have 400,000 for trade secrets. So in other words, we have not included technically skilled workforce, expected expansion in the new product lines, business from prospective customers and potential contracts with prospective customers. So the market value of assets and liabilities of 5.8 million are giving us the difference which is the positive goodwill in the amount of uh, question number 7. The answer is A. The amount of consideration uh, then number 8 the goodwill that should be reported on this acquisition is 86.2 that's still uh, letter A okay so number 8 is letter A then uh, number 9 the total assets in the balance sheet of the PSG in September 30, 20x5 is, uh, we have now the assets before acquisition, total assets of the PSG, 150 million, then the cost paid for acquisition equal to uh, 85 uh, million, that's the cash paid for the amount of 85 million. Then uh, cash paid for consulting 12 million. And we have cash paid for stock registration in the amount of uh, 600,000. Uh, so we add assets acquired, fair value. We have the current asset of 800,000 that of turquoise then we have plant and equipment for 10 million patents and trademarks for uh, 20 million signed customer contracts for consulting uh, projects for 1 million then uh, we have butlers franchise rights for 5 million then internet domain names 3 million uh, 1.5 million for customer order backlogs then uh, we have employment contracts for 500,000 registered company name for uh, 1 million 2 million for well publicized internet domain name for 2 million then we have trade dress, 1.2 million, and then 800,000 and 400,000. And we add the amount of goodwill uh, computed above, that's 86,200,000. So we now have the uh, answer to number 9, the amount of total assets in the balance sheet of DPSG on September 30, 20X5. Then the number 10, the total liabilities uh, in the balance sheet of DPSG on September 30. So we have now the total liabilities of DPSG uh, before acquisition. Uh, we have 1 million and 10 million. Total of uh, 11 million. Then earnings contingency given at uh, 2 million. And we have now the liabilities assumed, the current liabilities and the long term liabilities of turquoise uh, water. So we have now the total liabilities in number 10 in the amount of uh, 54,400. So that's letter C in uh, number 10 next in number 11 the common stock in the balance sheet of dpsg on september 30 so we have now the uh, common stock 
of uh, DPSG initially, 77,200, and then we add 100,000 times uh, 50, that's only 450,000. So, we have uh, 100,000 times uh, 0.50, so we now get uh, 50. We get the total of 77,250. Then we have the APIC of DPSG of 36,200. And we have 5 uh, million. We deduct 100,000 times uh, 50. Uh, 5 million, that's the new stock issued. And the per value is only 50. Thousand and we have to deduct the cost to issue so the net amount of 40,550 for retained earnings of DPSG 20,800 minus the direct cost of uh, 1,200,000 we have now the uh, direct cost to issue the shares so we have now in uh, the retained earnings the amount of uh, 12 million cash paid for consulting services being a direct cost so we have 12 million the retained earnings balance of 8.8 .8 million then we have the accumulated other compensive income 5.5 million and the treasury stock of 700,000. So, number 11, the answer is letter C. Now, we have the common stock in the balance sheet of DPSG for number 11, uh, 77,250. Ina ang common stock lang. And the additional uh, paid-in capital for uh, the amount of 40550 in uh, number 12. So, it's letter B. And 13, the stockholder shareholders' equity after the acquisition is uh, equal to 130 1,400 that, that's net of the treasury stock ok now we go to numbers uh, 14 uh, 14 through uh, 16 are based on the following information uh, Jerry acquired the net assets of Kaiga Corporation on July 1, 20X5 in exchange for net assets at fair uh, market value of Kaiga Company amounting to 835,740. Jerry issued 81,600 shares at a market price of 12 per share. That's 9 Par value. The out of pocket costs of the com combination were as follows. So we have the legal fees for the contract of business uh, combination, the audit fee, the printing cost of share certificates, the broker's fee, accountant's fee for pre acquisition audit, other direct cost of acquisition general and allocated expenses. Jerry will pay an additional cash consideration of 546000 in the event that Kaiga's net income will be equal or greater than 1140000 for the period ended December 31, 2015. At acquisition, there is a high probability of uh, uh, reaching the target net income and the fair value 
of the additional consideration was determined to be 234,000. Actual net income for the period ended December 31, 20X5 amounted to 1.5 million. The additional consideration was paid. So in number 14, the question is, what is the amount of goodwill to be recognized in the statement of financial position as of December 31, 20X5? So in number 14, the consideration transferred the common shares, 81,600 shares, and then we multiply it by uh, uh, 12. That's the uh, uh, price, the market price is uh, 12. So we now get the uh, consideration in number 14 of 979,200. Then the contingent consideration of uh, 234,000 uh, and we deduct the fair value of identifiable assets acquired and liabilities assumed of 835,740. So we have now the difference of 377,460 that's uh, number 14 the amount of uh, goodwill in number 14 is uh, letter C 377,460 so we are now uh, considering uh, the common shares 81,600 uh, given above at 12 that's the market value and then the contingent uh, consideration uh, given at 234,000 given on page 79. So we have the total and we deduct the fair value of identifiable assets of 835,740. So the goodwill of 377,460. Then in number 15, what amount of expense is to be recognized for the year ended December 31, 20X5? Assuming Jerry issued 45,000 shares capital in July 1, 20X5. So in number 15, we now refer to, uh, refer to number 4. Uh, or number 14, it's a matter of interpretation of uh, the term uh, expense. So in number 15, our answer is uh, letter D, 620,640. Uh, 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 so that's now for uh, the total amount of expense to be considered in uh, uh, the case of uh, number 15 what amount of expense is to be recognized for the year ended December 31, 20 X5 assuming Jerry issued 45,000 share capital on July 1, 20 X5 so we now get the total of 620,440 uh, now refer to number 4 as a matter of interpretation of that term uh, expense so we have now uh, in uh, the uh, computation of the total expense then uh, the consideration transferred 45,000 times 12, 540,000. Then the contingent consideration of 234,000. So we have now the total of 774,000. We deduct the fair value of 
identifiable assets acquired and liabilities assumed of 835,740. We have the bargain purchase gain of uh, 61,740. Since the target was met, meaning the actual net income was greater than the targeted net income of 1,140,000. Therefore, the actual payment of the contingent uh, consideration were as follows. Estimated liability of contingent uh, consideration 234,000. Then we have the loss expense on contingent uh, consideration of 312,000. The amount of cash paid is 546,000 given on page 79. So the balancing figure is the loss or expense on contingent consideration that's equal to 312,000. Therefore, the total expense amounted to 620, 640, uh, which is the sum of 42,720, 28,320, 96,000, and we have 90,000, and uh, 51, uh, 600, and we add 312,000, the expense on the contingent consideration, that's how we get 620,640 in number 15. Then in number 16, the answer is letter D. What amount to be chargeable to operations, profit or loss, net for the year ended December 31, 2005, assuming that the, that Jerry issued 45,000 shares. So number 16, uh, we have 600. 20,640 total amount expense in number 15. Then we have to deduct uh, the bargain purchase gain of 61,740. So we have now in letter D, 558,900. That's the amount chargeable to operation. So in letter D. Then in uh, number 17, uh, Maplewood Corporation purchased the net assets of West Corporation on January 2, 2004 for 500000 and paid 20000 in direct acquisition cost. West balance sheet on January 1, 2004 was as Follows. So we have now a uh, West as the acquired company. So accounts receivable, inventory, land building, equipment, then the current liabilities, long term debt, common stock paid in capital, retained earnings. Fair values agree with book values except for inventory, uh, inventory, land, and uh, equipment which have fair values of 400,000, uh, uh, 50,000, and uh, 70,000. West has patent rights valued at 20,000. The bargain purchase gain amounted to, so we have now in number 17, the acquisition related expenses, in the amount of uh, 20,000. Then we have the accounts receivable, 180,000. Inventory, 400,000. Land, 50,000. Building, 460,000. Equipment, 
70,000 and then patent for uh, 20,000 uh, is given. So, we have now the uh, current liabilities in the amount of uh, 70,000 long-term debt, 160,000 and then credit to cash for 520,000 uh, we have the uh, total credit to cash and credit gain on acquisition. So the uh, credit to cash is 500,000 and 20,000. And uh, the balancing figure is on the credit side. That means a gain of 50,000. So the consideration transferred of 500. Thousand. Uh, then we have the fair value of West net assets of uh, 180,000, 400,000, 50,000, uh, 60,000, and uh, 70,000 plus 20,000 minus 70,000 and 160,000. So, we now have the bargain purchase gain in the amount of 50,000. <coughs> so, we have now in number 17. Next, numbers 18 up to uh, 20. Okay, 18 up to 20. The question in number 18 how much is the goodwill or the gain on bargain uh, purchase on the business combination? So, we have now the consideration transferred is equal to 9,600 shares at 500. So, 4.8 uh, million and then we deduct the fair value of identifiable assets acquired and liabilities assumed. 7,680,000 and uh, we have to deduct 4,320,000 so we have the positive excess or goodwill of 1,440,000 in letter C then for 19 uh, how much is the total amount charged to profit or loss in relation to transaction above so in number 19 we have now 48,000 plus 480,000 plus uh, 96,000 these are the given uh, amounts in number 19 and we add 24,000 so the total now of uh, for let number 19 is letter B of uh, 648,000. Then in number 20, uh, in number 20, uh, the question is ignoring the consideration and the issue cost above, but instead CC company issued bonds with face value and fair value of 4.8 million before incurring the transaction cost. Transaction cost in issuing the bonds amounted to 240000 How much is the goodwill or gain on bargain or chase? So in number 20, the consideration transferred is 4.8 million. That's the fair value or face value of the bonds. Then we did that. The fair value of identifiable assets of 3,360,000. We have the positive excess or the goodwill equal to letter C. Next, numbers uh, 21 and 22 are based on the following information. So, in number 21, calculate the amount of consideration uh, transferred and 22 calculate any goodwill from the business combination so in number 21 the consideration transferred is equal to 
the fair market value of the shares issued by Ruben, that's uh, 80,000 shares times uh, 28 equals 2,240,000. And in number uh, 22, uh, the question is, calculate any goodwill from the business uh, combination so we have the consideration transferred of two million two hundred forty uh, thousand. Then we have the fair value of hopes net assets of two million uh, seven hundred twenty thousand, and we add two hundred thousand, and we deduct uh, one point two uh, million. So we now get the. Uh, difference of goodwill that's 520,000 in number 22 it's letter D the consideration transferred minus the fair value of hopes assets next we go to number 23 a shall acquire the assets except for cash and assume the liabilities of uh, Salt Company on um, January 2, 2004. As compensation, Richel Company gave 30,000 shares of its common stock, 15,000 shares of its 10% preferred stock and cash of 50,000 pesos to the stockholders of Salt Company. On the acquisition date, Richel Company stock had the following characteristics stock common a uh, pretzel company par value and the fair value preferred par and fair value immediately prior to the acquisition salt companies balance sheet reported the following book values and fair values so we have now the uh, cash comes receivable inventory at five four land buildings and equipment, current liabilities, months payable, common stock, other contributed capital, and a retained earnings. Calculate any goodwill from the business combination. So in number 23, the amount of uh, the goodwill is... Uh, in the amount of 848,000 so that's uh, letter D we have the accounts receivable net of allowance then we have the inventory of 330,000 land of 550 building and equipment 1,144 goodwill of 848,000 that's the balancing figure in the entry current liabilities for 275 months payable 495 including the premium and then the preferred stock of 15,000 shares times uh, 100 preferred in a and the common stock is 30,000 shares at 10. Then paid in capital at uh, uh, 25 minus 10 or 15 multiplied by uh, 30,000 for the common stock. So we have now the uh, cash paid of 50,000. The consideration transferred 1.5 million plus 750,000 plus 50,000 or 2.3 million then the fair value of the net assets of 198 plus 330 plus 550 plus 1,144,000 minus 275 minus 495 these are all given so we have now 1,000,000 452,000 so that the uh, balancing figure is goodwill in the amount of 848,000 in number 23.
Next, number uh, 24. Number 24 uh, requirement. Uh, we have uh, uh, Idina Company agreed to pay Burns Company, former stockholders, 200,000 cash in 2016. If post combination earnings of the combined company reach 1 million during 20x5. Calculate the gain on contingent consideration for Idina Company, assuming the earnings contingency was not met. So, in number 24, with the uh, answer of uh, 200,000, that's the uh, earnings uh, contingency in uh, number 24. Uh, so, we have now the uh, count receivable 240, inventory 320, land buildings and goodwill, allowance for uncollectible accounts and accounts payable, notes payable of uh, 600,000 in week credit to cash for the consideration transferred of 2.6 million. The fair value of net assets acquired is 3,440,000 minus 870. So the amount of goodwill is 30,000. Estimated liability for contingent consideration of 200,000. And uh, we have the estimated uh, gain on contingent consideration of uh, 200,000. So, in number 24, uh, the requirement is uh, calculate the gain on contingent consideration assuming the earnings contingency was not met. Okay, so the earnings contingency was not met. The company agreed to pay Burns, former stockholder, 200,000 cash if post combination earnings of the combined company reach 1 million during 20x5. So calculate the gain and contingent consideration for Idina company, assuming the earnings contingency was not met. So meaning it's now a gain on contingent consideration so we have now the uh, computations in number uh, 24 so we have cash of uh, 1.4 uh, million for cash and then we have receivables of uh, 650 and uh, uh, by the way, we have the second uh, solution. The second uh, solution accounts receivable net of 220. Then inventory 320. Planned 1,508,000. Uh, buildings 1,392,000. And goodwill being the balancing figure. The credit accounts payable to 70 and notes payable 600 cash of uh, given amount of uh, 2.6 uh, uh, million and the estimated liability for contingent liability for uh, the given amount of 200,000. Uh, so we have now the consideration transferred of 2.8 million fair value of net assets acquired uh, 3,440,000 minus liabilities of 870 so we have now the amount of goodwill equal to 230,000 or alternatively uh, we have uh, accounts receivable of uh, 240,000 inventory, 
of uh, 320,000 land of 1,508,000 uh, buildings, 1,392,000. So, goodwill is a balancing figure. Allowance for uncollectible accounts of uh, the amount of uh, 20,000. That's the allowance for uncollectible uh, accounts and uh, accounts payable of 270 and 600 for notes payable. So we have to pay cash of 2.6 uh, million. And uh, we have the consideration transferred of 2.6 million, the fair value of us acquired. So we have the goodwill of 30,000. But we are adding goodwill for 200,000 estimated liability for contingent consideration. However, it was not met. So it will be again on contingent consideration. Okay, so that's all. We will continue on Thursday for the remaining problems. And then